Yeah, hi, good evening friends and welcome to SQL Master YouTube channel. So I am Anju here and I welcome you all for my YouTube channel. So today in this video also I am going to discuss with you some of the very important and knowledgeable uh, questions and answers related to ETL testing. So before starting the video, if you are not subscribed to SQL Master YouTube channel, kindly subscribe to SQL Master so that you will get more important video regarding ETL testing and Oracle SQL. So let us start the video here. So uh, what I made here some slides and uh, we can go through that. So first question is what are the key steps of the ETL processes? Okay, so then answer would be while the abbreviation implies a neat three step processes ETL actually encompasses more steps. ETL refers, refers to data extraction from different sources, its transformation and loading into a data warehouse and the eventual analysis of warehouse data. In short, ETL comprises transportation of data across all four areas, extraction, transformation, loading and analysis. So this is what the answer for this question. So let us move to the uh, next question. Why is data warehousing important? So answer, data warehousing is a core component of business intelligence by bringing different data sources under a single unified library analysis can work more efficiently get more in-depth insights and spot patterns across different data sets ultimately it helps businesses be more competitive by improving their decision making processes so let us uh, moving to next question what are the key difference between e etl and elt so elt Sorry, ETL transforms data before it's loaded into the target system, while ELT transforms data within the data warehouse. Out of the two, ELT is generally considered the better solution for large amounts of data, offering a more flexible and agile way of working with data. So uh, let us move to the next slide. What is meant by partitioning in ETL? So partitioning refers to the division of large data sets into smaller, more manageable areas based on the shared characteristics. Its purpose is to make the data warehouse easier to navigate and improve query processing performance. So next question is, what types of applications and tools are used in ETL? The answer is, there are a number of different ETL software tools on the market but they all share the same purpose of data integration. Some of the most popular ETL tools are Informatica Power Center, IBM uh, Infosphere Data Stage, Oracle Data Integrator, Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services that is SSIS and Xplenty. So these are the tools what we use in ETL process. So what are the different types of facts in ETL? Facts are quantitative pieces of information about a business such as sales numbers or account balances. They are stored in fact table. They are, there are three different types of facts. Non-additive facts that is cannot be summed up across any dimension in the fact table such as a percentage. Semi-additive facts can be summed up for some but not all dimensions in the fact table such as a head count. Additive fact table can be summed up across all dimensions in the fact table such as sales. So uh, next question is uh, what is the role of dimension table? How does it differ from a fact table? Fact tables contain measurements and matrices about the business. Dimensions tables are adjoined to fact tables by a foreign key and show descriptive characteristics of facts within them. While fact tables are granular, dimension tables are wordy and detailed. So next question is, why is ETL testing important and how can it be done? Regular testing is an essential part of ETL process. It ensures that data arrives in the analytics warehouse smoothly and accurately. ETL testing can be performed in the following ways. Review primary sources to make sure they have extracted without any data loss. Verify that the data has been transformed into appropriate data type for the warehouse. Check that the warehouse accurately reports cases of invalid data. Document any bugs that occur during the ETL processes. So this is the uh, best answer for this question. 
So how is the uh, data analyzed in ETL? Once data has been successfully transported into the data warehouse, analysis, uh, analysts uh, typically use third-party business intelligence applications such as Tableau to run, to turn the raw data into graphs and charts based on which uh, business decisions can be made. Some of the uh, latest ETL tools are equipped with their uh, own data analysis mechanisms. So moving to next slide, what are the some of the most common types of ETL testing? Uh, there are several ETL testing methods, each one serving a specific purpose at different points in the ETL process. Some of the most common types of ETL testing are production, validation, that is data in the target system is compared against the sources for validation, uh, validity purposes. And second one is source to target count testing, that is number of loaded records in the data warehouse is checked for the consistency against the expected record count. Performance testing, that is uh, the loading process is tested to make sure it takes a place within the expected time frames. Data transformation testing, uh, data in the uh, target system is checked to verify that it has been correctly transformed in line with business requirements. So next question is, what are the snapshots in ETL? The snapshots are read-only copies of data from master table before uh, change to the data warehouse is made. A snap snapshot is taken and stored locally for the reference. Uh, this works uh, to preserve records as they were before the change was made. Each snapshot has uh, three components, uh, the time it was taken, a key to identify snapshot, uh, the data relating to the key. So let us move to the next question. What is the uh, data profiling in ETL? Data profiling is the process of reviewing source data to identify its structure, quality and interrelationships. It can, uh, it's an important uh, precursor uh, to analyze the stage as it ensures that the appropriate source data is loaded into the data warehouse and that it is transformed in line with the business requirements. So uh, the next question is, what are these some of the most uh, common ETL bugs? So ETL testing can reveal a wide variety of problems. Some of these include loss of data between source and target system, lack of consistency between data sets, lengthy query processing, system crashes due to the scale of uh, data warehouse, cosmetic bugs uh, related to font uh, color and alignment. So these are the some of the bugs, ETL bugs. What is meant by the uh, three-tier architecture of ETL? The most data warehouses comprise three separate areas. These are uh, the staging area, where the data is extracted from various sources and processed. The data integration area, where the data from staging area is transferred, sometimes called uh, the o OLAP server. Uh, the access area, where transformed data is uh, retrieved by users for analysis. So moving to next one. Why is the uh, staging area is in ETL is important? Uh, the staging area uh, that is the landing zone for the data extracted from the sources and uh, sits between the source and target in the ETL process. Here uh, the data cleansed and modified uh, before it is transferred to data warehouse. This is more uh, efficient alternative to transforming data in the target system itself. So 16th question is what is the difference between initial load and incremental load in ETL? Uh, the initial load refers to the process of uh, loading data from uh, primary sources to uh, target system for the first time. Once uh, this has been completed, all the subsequent loads uh, into the system will be incremental loads where only uh, new and modified records are brought in. So this is what called as incremental load. What are some of the challenges in ETL testing? It's important to identify potential challenges early on the ETL process to avoid bottlenecks further down uh, the pipeline. Some of the most common problems and challenges of ETL testing are loss, corruption, duplication of data during transportation, uh, underperformance caused by the large volumes of historical data, unachievable business requirements, limited availability of uh, source data, outdated ETL tools. These are the some of the uh, challenges uh, while facing in ETL testing. Can you explain the ETL testing process from start to finish? Uh, ETL testing is uh, a demanding process uh, that can that should be uh, completed in the following order. 
define the business requirements that is uh, liaise uh, with the client to understand their reporting needs and define the uh, scope of project validating data sources that is perform a data count check and ensure check keys are in place uh, design etl logic that is design the mapping sheet sql script and transformational records extract source data identify any bugs during the extraction phase transform data uh, make sure that uh, data is transformed consistently load data perform a record count check and verify accuracy of uh, loaded data review process that is verify the validity layout and export functionality of the summary report file test report share test results with the relevant stakeholders so 19 question is what are the some of the uh, best etl uh, features that our company should be using a good etl tool make a uh, data integration process more efficient and user friendly uh, some particularly useful etl features are cloud compatibility uh, that is allowing for greater flexibility and uh, better handling massive data sets third party integrations to connect with erp platforms and bi tools automatic uh, code generation to reduce the risk of human errors and speed up development initiative interface to improve user navigation sophisticated debugging tools uh, which reduce uh, description uh, to data flows so these are the some questions again like uh, uh, what it what is the uh, role of etl in uh, data mining process okay so in data mining uh, what is the exactly the etl role etl is an important early phase of data mining process after data sources have been identified and business requirements are set etl is performed to bring all historical data under a single consistent system from here the data is analyzed and uh, modeled uh, using bi tools data scientists are uh, then able to evaluate the uh, data to draw conclusions about business decisions so next question is uh, what are the different types of partitioning in etl uh, when should they be used so uh, the two main types of partitioning in etl are uh, hash partitioning that is rows are assigned using uh, hash key uh, meaning partitions depend on the uh, specified hash hashing algorithm uh, the next one is uh, round robin partitioning so that is what uh, the rows are assigned to round robin manner meaning each partition contains approximately the same number of rows so moving to next question uh, what is meant by regression testing in etl uh, regression testing is used to after developing functional repairs to the data warehouse uh, its purpose is to check uh, if said repairs have impaired other areas of etl process regression testing should always be performed after system modifications to see if they have been introduced uh, new defects so uh, next question is uh, what is the purpose of uh, data purging and archiving so data purging is the process of uh, permanently deleting the obs uh, obsolete uh, data from data warehouse for example the data may be purged once it becomes uh, 10 years old uh, this is done to free up the space uh, on the server and uh, improve performance data purging is usually uh, accompanied uh, by the archiving uh, where the data is moved to the separate storage device for uh, long term retention typically uh, for legal uh, pur purposes okay next 24th question is uh, what are the key differences between connected and unconnected lookups in etl so there are several key differences between the connected and unconnected lookups uh, connected lookups return multiple columns from the same row uh, whereas unconnected lookups uh, return one column from each row connected lookups re receive values directly from the mapping pipeline whereas unconnected lookups retrieve value from a uh, separate transformation uh, connected lookup use a dynamic or static cache whereas unconnected lookups only use a static cache uh, so these are the main difference between connected and unconnected lookups in etl uh, the next question is when would you perform a lookup transformation in etl lookup transformation is used to retrieve values from a data source based on the specific lookup conditions uh, these are a few scenarios when uh, this may be necessary for example to update the dimension table uh, to check the records already existing exist in table uh, find a specific value from a table uh, so uh, friends these are the some important uh, etl related questions and answers i hope you understood these uh, questions and answers uh, perfectly so i will be with you with some more intern uh, etl testing uh, questions and answers related to interview so uh, so thank you for watching the video i will be with you in my next video uh, thanks a lot uh, take care friends